Good morning. Good evening. Good afternoon. And remember, context is everything. Media Network. Founder and CEO John Michael is reading a textbook cover to cover. Today, Chapter 35, Section 3, Nation Building in the Middle East, Three Case Studies. Again, this book said it probably a hundred times. I'll say it another nine. This book was published in 2002, copyright 2001, which means that the words were written in preparation for the 2001 world history landscape. As we know, 2001 momentous year in the shifting of world history. Middle East, instrumental in that. Nation building in the Middle East, 2001. Three case studies. 1945 to 2001, something like that. Setting the scene. An Iranian religious leader, Rahola Khomeini, Rahola Khomeini, angrily denounced to the government, while the Shah lived off in riches of the land, claimed Kalmaleni. Most people lived in misery, especially in the capital city of Tehran. Look at these pits, holes in the ground where people live, dwellings you reach by going down a hundred steps into the ground, homes people have built out of rush matting or clay so their poor children can have somewhere to live. That is declarations of Ayatollah Khomeini. Khomeini's fiery speeches helped spur an Iranian revolution in 1979. In this section, we will see how three nations pursued modernization, Turkey, Egypt, and Iran. Turkey, Egypt, and Iran are the three most populous nations in the Middle East. While they have faced similar issues, each followed its own course. New heading. 68 followers, and thank you to each and every one of you 68 wonderful followers. I appreciate your patronage. Thank you for being here, and uh, thank you everyone else for being here as well, subscriber or not. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Yes, more content coming soon. Book almost finished. About 50 pages left. I've read the entire book. 1,000 pages. Okay. Turkey moves towards democracy. In the 1920s, Kemal Ataturk Ataturk, uh, began his campaign to transform Turkey into modern secular state. At the beginning of the Cold War, the Soviets tried to expand southward into Turkey to gain control of Bosporus. With American aid, Turkey held off Soviet threat. Later, Turkey joined NATO and remained an important Western ally in the Mediterranean. Government and Economy Turkey struggled to build stable government. At first, the military seized power in times of unrest. In time, a uh, multi-party democracy emerged. In the 1990s, Muslim reformers won support and played a larger role in Turkish politics. Turkey transformed its economy by expanding agriculture through increased irrigation and by promoting industry. It exported crops and manufactured goods to Europe and hoped to join the European Union. While the EU agreed to build closer ties, it denied Turkey full membership. As elsewhere, modernization and urbanization brought social turmoil. Istanbul could not provide jobs for millions of newcomers. The jobless and the poor lived in shanty towns where desperate conditions fed unrest. Tragic earthquakes. Turkey lies in a region 
of frequent earthquakes. The nation has the technology to erect buildings that can withstand most tremors. Yet, because, the, because of rapid urbanization and poorly enforced building codes, many structures were hastily put up without adequate safeguards. In 1999, a series of powerful earthquakes shook western Turkey, including major industrial areas. Poorly constructed buildings collapsed, killing or injuring tens of thousands of people. Many more were left homeless. The government response to the disaster was widely criticized as slow and inadequate. The earthquakes were a, catastro a catastrophe that an already embattled nation did not need. Conflicts. For decades, Turkey tried to force Kurds within its borders to abandon their identity. Kurds were forbidden to speak, publish, or broadcast in their own language. No good. Kurdish revolts were fiercely suppressed, although Turkish government slowly agreed to abolish laws against Kurdish culture. Kurdish nations, uh, nationalists, continued to press for autonomy. Turkey was also waged a long struggle over Cyprus, an island in the eastern Mediterranean. The roots of conflict dated back to Ottoman times. In the 1970s, clashes between the Greek majority and Turkish minority led Turkey to invade. The island was then partitioned. Today, UN peacekeepers monitor the tense division, dividing line between Turkish and Greek communities. Finally, Turkey itself was divided politically. On one side stood secular politicians who were backed up by the military. On the other side stood Islamic reformers who demanded a larger role for religion in society. Although the military seemed to retain the upper hand, Islamists kept up their pressures for change. Turkey. I don't really have much to say about it. Is Turkey part of the EU now? I mean, I don't think it is. I have no reason to believe that it is, but I'm just going to see because 22 years is 22 years. Is Turkey in the EU? Is Turkey a member of the EU? Not officially. Turkey is one of EU's main partners. Uh, and both are members of the European Union Turkey Customs Union. Turkey borders two EU member states, Bulgaria and Greece. Okay, well, there's your answer. Egypt, a leader in the Arab world. New heading. Egypt has roots both in Africa, where it's located, and in the Arab world. Geography has always played a key role in Egypt's destiny. Its location between the Mediterranean and Red Seas is uh, strategically important. It shares a long border with Israel and controls the Suez Canal. It is a rich agricultural region, but since most of Egypt is desert, 99% of its people live on 4% of the land in the fertile Nile Valley. Nasser. In the 1950s, Gamal Abdel Nasser emerged as a towering Arab leader, like Ataturk. Nasser was a military officer who rose to power after the overthrow of a weak ruler who had allowed foreigners to dominate his country. Nasser set out to modernize Egypt and end Western domination. In 1956, he nationalized the Suez Canal, ending British and French control. The canal is the property of Egypt, he declared, was dug by Egypt's sons, and 120,000 of them died while working. That's a lot of people to die while building something. That's crazy. How long did it take them to build the Suez Canal? And how did 120,000 people die building it? That's insane. Why wouldn't you do a better job? Why would you continually... It's like... That's insane. That is insane. 
120,000 people died? Or is he just saying that? That is a crazy, crazy number for people to die in a building project. I understand it's long. The Suez Canal is not a short canal. It's a long canal. But wouldn't you, after the 100th person, person died, think we need to probably do a better job of not killing our workers? Or wouldn't the workers, maybe it was slave labor. Well, who knows. An outspoken enemy of Israel, Nasser led two wars. Oh wait, Nasser's defiance of West boosted his prestige in the Arab world. An outspoken enemy of Israel, Nasser led two wars against the Zionist state. Although defeated each time, he nevertheless resembled, uh, remained a symbol of Arab independence and pride. Zionist state. What does that mean? I don't know what that means. Economic development. Like leaders of other developing nations, Nasser turned to socialism. He nationalized banks and businesses. He launched land reforms that broke up large estates and distributed the land to peasant farmers. Nasser's economic policies had only limited success. In the 1960s, with Soviet help, Nasser built the giant Aswan ha Dam. Uh... Aswan High Dam in the Upper Nile. The dam created a huge reserve, uh, reservoir, Lake Nasser, as well as more than 2 million acres of new farmland. It controlled Nile floodwaters and made year-round irrigation possible. But such benefits had a price. The dam increased the salt content of the Nile destroying fish hatcheries in the eastern Mediterranean and caused erosion of the delta. The triangular area of marshland at the month of the mouth of the river, as Lake Nasser rose, many ancient temples had to be relocated to higher ground. Okay, so it sounds bad. It sounds like a bad thing. Um, let's see if it still is functioning. A little uh, Google search here. Uh, let's see. Aswan High Dam. Despite its success, the Aswan High Dam has produced several negative side effects, mostly caused to the gradual decrease of fertility of agricultural lands in the Nile Delta, which used to benefit the millions um, of tons of silt deposited annually by the Nile floods. Okay, so it took 40 years to destroy that. That's good. Uh, 50 years, whatever. Either way, sounds like a bad thing. But what do I know? And let's continue here. Sadat. After Nasser's death in 1970, the new president, Anwar Sadat, took steps to open Egypt to foreign investment and private business. In foreign affairs, Sadat moved away from Soviet camp and closer to the United States. In 1979, he became the first Arab leader to make peace with Israel. Although that move angered the Arab state, Sadat promised Egyptians that peace would have economic benefits. It did bring American aid, but did not improve life for most Egyptians. Continuing issues. In 1981, Sadat was assassinated by Muslim extremists. His successor, Hosni Mubarak. Oh, Hosni Mubarak, I've heard of him reaffirmed the peace with Israel. At the same time, he remained fe uh, he mended fences with uh, Arab neighbors. Under Mubarak, Egypt continued to push for more peace in the region. At home, Mubarak faced serious problems. Although industry and farm output expanded, the economy could not keep pace with the population growth. Most rural families were streamed into cities like Cairo, barely managed uh, to survive in teeming slums. Thousands of families living in the City of the Dead, uh, a Cairo cemetery, symbolized the misery of urbanization. 
Islamic reformers denounced the government's failure to solve economic and social ills. Their model for change based on Islamic situ uh, solutions seemed to offer a vision for a better future. Muslim groups set up schools and f uh, offered the poor many other social services, which tight government budgets did not provide. Extremists turned to terrorist attacks, and harsh government crackdowns tended to increase support for the disasters. New heading. That's Egypt. Hosni Mubarak. Let's just see when he, when he stopped leading. Hosni Mubarak. Hosni Mubarak. Until 2011. Is that when he died? I don't know. He died in 2020 at 91. So he led from 81 to 2011. Iran's ongoing revolution. New heading. Iran is most ethnically diverse country in the Middle East. About half of the people are Persian-speaking Iranians. The rest come from many groups unlike their neighbors. Most Iranians are Shiite, not Sunni Muslims. Nationalism and oil. Because of its vast oil fields, Iran became a force of British, focus of British, Soviet, and American interests. In 1945, Shah Mohammad Reza uh, Pahlavi uh, had Western backing but faced many opponents at home. Iranian nationalists wanted to end British control of Iran's oil wealth and limit the Shah's dictatorial powers. I just quickly want to review what the difference is between Sunni and Shiite because it is significant. I don't remember. Sunni versus Shiite. Sunni Muslims believe that the Prophet did not explicitly declare a successor. Okay. Shiite Muslim, Shia Muslims believe that the Prophet publicly dis, uh, designated his cousin and son-in-law um, as the first in line of hereditary imams from the Prophet's family to lead the community after him. Okay, so it's just a complete departure post Muhammad they believe different things like kind of like um, Trump thinks stolen election right uh, and the the supporters that think stolen election don't you know they think the country is going in this direction right this direction and this direction I'm just trying to give a, a modern day thing but this is thousands of years well probably about a thousand and change uh, of never the twain meeting when did Islam start? Let's actually answer that question too. Islam. Seventh century. So, yeah, what? 1300 years ago? 1300 years ago, 1400 years ago, um, and then uh, since Muhammad's death, they believe different things should happen. Different leaders should have led. So that's why they don't agree. I think they don't agree violently. Led by Muhammad Mossadegh, nationalists of Iran's parliament voted to nationalize the oil industry. That action set off long, complex crises involving the Shah Mossadegh, Britain, and the United States. In 1953, the United States helped the Shah oust Mossadegh, a move that outraged many Iranians. Um, in the United States wanted the anti-communist Shah as the ally against the Soviets. For tw the next 25 years, American weapons and experts helped the Shah stay in power. Reform from above. The, to strengthen Iran and to quiet unrest, the Shah pushed for modernization. He used oil wealth to build roads and industries, redistributed the same land to peasants, and extended new rights to women. To separate religion and government, he reduced the power of Islamic scholars, teachers, and legal experts. The Shah, reform from above, the Shah's reform from above, was supported by the army, the westernized elite, and other 
who uh, pro uh, prospered under the Shah. Opposition came from landowners, merchants, students, religious leaders. As pro uh, protests grew, the Shah became more repressive. His secret police arrested critics. Some were tortured, executed, or forced into exile. Since the 1930s, writer Neguib Mohafous was woven stories that capture the rich tapestry of 20th century Egypt life. He has long been considered one of the greatest Arabic writers, and in 1988 won the Nobel Prize for Literature. The following excerpts evoke the sight and sound of Mohafous, Egypt. In 1957, I'm not going to read it, never mind. This is just Humanity's Link and... Uh, I realized I'm not interested. Islamic Revolution. In the 1970s, the Shah foes rallied behind the exile. Uh, Ayatollah Rahola Khomeini. Ayatollah is a title given to the learned Shiite legal experts. Oh, is it? That's what Ayatollah means. It's a really really nice sounding word in terms of its syllabic content phonemic content I think that it's just a good sounding word all in all Ayatollah Ayatollah is given a title given to learned Shiite legal experts uh, he condemned western influence and accused the Shah of violating Islamic law in 1979 massive unrest forced the Shia to flee. As Khomeini returned to Iran, his supporters proclaimed an Islamic Republic based on the Quran and Sharia. They set up the theocracy or government ruled by religious leaders. Revolutionaries attacked corruption. They replaced secular courts with religious ones, abolished the Shah's new favoring women's rights, laws favoring women's rights, and banned Western books, music, and movies. At first, the new government allowed some open discussion, but before long, uh, the revolutionaries suppressed opponents, just as the Shah had. Foreign Policy The new leaders bitterly denounced the West. The, when the Shah was allowed into the United States for medical treatment, angry revolutionaries seized the American embassy in Tehran and held 52 hostages for over a year. Iran also tried to export its revolution. It urged Muslims in countries like Egypt and Turkey to overthrow secular governments. Although the revolution seemed to strengthen in the Islamic revival, it, was not product, uh, it did not produce in other Muslim lands. In 1980, as you will read, Iraq took advantage of the turmoil to invade Iran. In Iran, the war helped rally support for new government. But the eight-year ordeal took a huge economic and human toll. Moderate Voices The end of Iraq-Iran War was, uh, and Khomeini's death in 1989 helped more moderate voices gain power. They worked to rebuild the economy. Industries began producing much-needed consumer goods. Low oil prices in the 1990s hurt Iran's income and the country faced pressing need for a large population of young people for education and jobs. In the 1997 presidential elections, a moderate candidate won by a landslide. As moderates moved to ease restrictions, conservative critics blocked them. Protests erupted, revealing splits between moderates and conservatives within the Iranian Revolution. Iran also tried to improve its relations with the West. By 2000, Iran and the United States moved towards reopening diplomatic relations. I don't know if it's worked out too well, but maybe it has. I don't really know. Impact. The revolution changed Iran's foreign policy and some forms of public behavior. Although some reforms helped rural people, the revolution did not improve life greatly for most Iranians. Corruption resurfaced, poverty, unemployment, and other problems remained. As Iran marked the 20th year of its revolution, moderates and radicals still debated how to achieve its goals of modernization within an Islamic republic. Thank you. That's it. God bless. Goodbye.
and 68 followers. I appreciate you. This is great. Um, we're almost done with the book. When the book's done, um, I'm going to watch a television show called Twin Peaks and go episode by episode and give my thoughts on it because I know a lot about the show. I've seen it too many times to count. Oh, and there's the bell. God bless.